Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Throughout most of the year, the first reading that we hear on a Sunday comes from the Old Testament. But if you've noticed, throughout the season of Easter, that's not the case. A change occurs in those appointed readings that give us a glimpse into the early church through the history that is recorded in the, in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. And since we are celebrating the resurrection of Christ, it not only makes sense then to celebrate also the new life that rises up in his church. Now this is different from a building, a cultural community, or, or really anything else that is made by man. Rather, it is the spirit of the gospel residing in the baptized as they travel throughout the world. And so let's take a moment then to ponder that question that our small catechism asks. What has the Holy Spirit done to bring you to faith? Now those in Christ answer, the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. That is, he has invited and drawn me by the gospel partake of the spiritual blessings that are mine in Christ. In the text for our sermon today, a man of Ethiopia never sees the Spirit, but he does see the face of Philip. And more importantly, he listens to his voice that shares that good news of Jesus. And we cannot separate the work of the Redeemer from how he now works in the redeemed. As Philip was a branch connected to Christ the vine, so today we are in him by word and sacrifice. And from him comes fruit to life. Fruitful witness, you see, is alive by the faithfulness of Jesus. Salvation won by Jesus is strength resting on the baptized. Early in the history of the church, persecution broke out in Jerusalem, and the Christians were scattered all over. Now, this would be a tremendous hindrance to any, any other group, the cohesiveness of people that are then scattered around, but, but not with the Spirit of God who lives among the baptized. Philip, one of those selected by the apostles, well, he ended up preaching in the city of Samaria. But then he received a special revelation to leave this place of success, this Samaria, and instead go out to a desolate region. And there he found one soul, a man in a chariot. But it took a divine act by an angel to send Philip. But God would break down even his fear then to speak to him. We read, the Spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. This man was a foreigner from Ethiopia, and he had a prestigious job. He had even come to fear the true God. And nothing stood in the way of Philip speaking Christ to him. And Jesus gave Philip then the strength to do it. Now, each of us has a comfort zone. And getting out of it easily exposes our weaknesses. But the Spirit of God comforts the baptized. And so we look to the Savior by the promise of the words of those that had the Spirit. In our epistle, John says, In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Jesus breaks down our sinful fears and our continued failures of self-centeredness. His forgiveness in absolution and given at the Lord's Supper is the voice of the good news that gives strength to the baptized. The one who gives life to the world speaks with boldness by the cross for all. 
Now we may not meet many foreigners, but the Lord that sees those desolate places in our friends, in our family, in our co-workers, those desolate souls who never hear the name of Christ, The Word is life and is able to save all such sinners. And that's why the baptized teach the gospel. Philip had confidence to ask the Ethiopian, do you understand what you are reading? He wasn't so much looking for an answer. This was, well, this was an invitation. And the man was far from prideful or careless. And he responded, how can I, unless someone guides me? In view of the text of Isaiah, Philip then had to explain the confusion over Scripture. It wasn't about feeling. It wasn't about personal experience. It certainly wasn't about opinion. Because God's Word has life in itself to speak. The man had questions. And Philip gave answers centered on the promise of salvation for sinners. And since Jesus had said in his great commission, go, baptize, and teach, the Spirit teaches through the baptism. We read, Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. As our society starts to move farther away from education at the center of things, well, this also affects the link between baptism and the life-giving word. John Warren, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. Could a lack of education in what we believe as Lutherans say anything about what we speak with the gospel? Are we sometimes quiet because well, we really don't have anything to say to sinners? We learn as the baptized because Christ loves us. And what we learn then goes out in love to others as God's word of life to them. Openly and unabashedly teaching why we believe what we believe, well, that's the responsibility of parents, of pastors, and of the whole church, that is the body of Christ. And yet Jesus gives this promise. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Like the reading from Isaiah, God's word serves the purpose for all to meet the Savior, Jesus Christ. And the promise of Christ is fruitful. It is fruitful to bring others to baptism. Who really knows how long the conversation took place in the chariot and how many words they spoke to each other. However, what we do find out is that as they were going along the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, see, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? Now, his words were not so much how he had decided to follow Jesus, how he willed for his salvation, or how much water, in fact, to use, a dunk or a sprinkle. His interest, rather, was in receiving salvation by water, for it carries the promise of Jesus' word. And by his teaching, Philip clearly directed the man to baptize. It was the very source of life grounded in Jesus' death and resurrection. 
this adult Ethiopian in all his glory, for he was a prestigious man. He humbled himself to become like a child by repentance and faith in Jesus. And after baptism, Philip was no longer present, but the man was not alone. The Ethiopian eunuch had the blessing to be joined to the body of Christ, joined to the church. And he went away, as our text says, rejoicing, rejoicing with life by God's word, which gave Jesus. And what was unknown in his country would now be known. For this Ethiopian youth was the baptized, a branch bearing the fruit that is the love of God. What Jesus did for all by his suffering and death on the cross, it bears fruit. Christ's victory he gave to Philip, and it belonged to him. And Philip passed it on to the Ethiopian eunuch, and it now belonged to him. But now we have that same joy that is found in the work of our baptism. And this connectedness comes from the word and the sacrament which still give Jesus. He teaches the truth for all to learn. He forgives the sinner and brings him to repent and to believe in him. He promises that there are spiritual blessings in his name. And the chief blessing is baptism. For it has spoken the living voice of Jesus into each and every one of us. And this doesn't happen in some sort of mysterious way, as if the Spirit of the Lord just fell out of the sky. It came from those who brought us to Jesus by teaching us His Word. The baptized bring others to baptism. Works do not save, but our works serve others the gospel in our lives. And any good fruit always, always rests in what comes from Jesus. He is the one who brought life out of his death, blessings out of his burden, and hope out of the despair of his cross. Fruitful witness is alive by the faithfulness of Jesus. Now Christ shines during this Easter season with his success, his triumph over death through his sacrifice. The righteousness won by the Savior is now the life for any branch baptized into his name. The fruit, the fruit then is, is a benefit a benefit for others to share in the same blessing that we all have in Christ Jesus. Branches grafted into his holy body through the water and the word of holy baptism. And brothers and sisters, may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in that great vine, our Lord, and save Jesus Christ. Amen.